Disclaimer, I have not been compensated in any way for this teardown and review. I was given this product on loan to do a full teardown and then I have to ship it back to the manufacturer as this is a prototype of a yet to be released product. Let's check it out. I received this big box to evaluate. In fact, I received two big boxes. This one's got a, a 100 watt folding solar panel in it. I'm gonna do the official unboxing of uh, both of these. So I wonder which one I should show you guys first. Maybe we'll show you that this one here is obviously the power station and that's the solar panel that charges it. And what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna do a full teardown on this. I received this on loan, so no, I did not receive a free product. I received this on loan from the manufacturer and they paid a lot of money to get it to me. Just in, just in broker charges, they paid uh, $30 to get one and they paid 90 bucks. So they've paid, you know, about $110. This is just in the, the broker charges for UPS and the taxes and stuff that were that were assessed on this unit. Uh, this was paid for by the supplier, so it hasn't cost me anything. But uh, they wanted to see a video. They want me to take it down, take it apart, and show the build quality. This is a new product that has, I don't even think it's on the market yet. This is like a sample. And they're going to be going into production and up for sale very soon. So they offered me this one to take apart and show you guys how well these are built. And we'll, we'll see how they're built. I'm going to take this thing apart as far as I can. And, uh, and hopefully it will still work when it goes back together. Um, maybe we'll look at the solar panel first. So let me get the solar panel up. We'll unbox that one first and then we'll unbox this one. So here is the solar panel in its secondary box. We'll open this up and uh, take a peek at this. And uh, ideally I'd like to connect this up and, and we'll do the charging of the uh, of this power station. Today it's, uh, it's raining like crazy and there's no sun. So I won't be able to test the efficiency of this thing. At least not today. But that doesn't mean I can't take it apart today. That's it. it says it's a portable solar panel and here it is all packed up so we'll just lift it out of the out of the box and here is the solar panel and it folds open to reveal actually quite a large it's a 100 watt panel and to give you an idea how big this is, let me zoom the camera out so you can see that it basically covers my entire bench. So there it is. How large is this? Well, I can put it in front of my my 42 inch TV and it will uh, dwarf it. It's, it's actually quite large. So here's our specifications. It's a 100 watt output, 18 volt at five and a half amp. It has USB-A, a quick connect and type C output. It's a monocrystalline cells and has adjustable kickstand so you can stand it up to get the best angle to the sun. If we get some sun while I'm producing this video, we'll uh, set it out. It's uh, November the, the 2nd, so it's we're, we're getting into winter here now, so the sun probably isn't going to be shining. Well, not that much. We'll get a few days here, but with my time constraint to produce this one, I may not be able to demonstrate the solar panel to its full efficiency, but we'll, we'll try. On the back, there's adjustable kickstands to prop it up. One for each side. And of course, here will be the output goodies. Let's take a look inside the output and see what type of connectors we've got. Here's our connector cables. Comes with various connector cables to connect to various types of charger requirements. Let's say, get your connector right out of the solar panel itself, which you would plug in like that. 
this gives you your standard charging voltage for charging up the battery pack that I'm going to show you in a minute. Of course the other connectors that came with allows you to connect two of these panels together. So you would plug in one panel to here and then the other panel would go to the other connector. It just allows you to parallel two of them together which will double your power. And that's what this is for. And I guess with you, you could add even more panels using more of these adapters to connect multiple panels together. The plugs only go in one way so there's no messing up polarity. You simply just plug the connectors together. So you can't plug the positive into the negative. You have to always plug them in accordingly. And now you've got black wire to black wire, red wire to red wire. That's for charging your your battery backup source. You can also charge directly through the USB outputs here. There are a USB C and a standard USB A. And it's got quick quick charge 3.0. If I give it some light from the bench here, let's just open that up a bit. We can probably get a bit of power now because there's some yeah, here we do, we have power. You see, both of these outputs are putting out power. This is just from the light on my bench. We can actually put a meter on here and see what kind of voltage we're getting at the end of this cable. Just from the light that's in the shop, which is just a bunch of overhead light. It is quite bright in here. I will admit that my studio lights are actually fairly bright. Let's just see what we do get in terms of, of voltage. This is the main event. This is what this one's all about. This is the battery backup power station. As you can see, it's a cargo aircraft only, forbidden in a passenger aircraft, as it has lithium ion batteries in it. This thing weighs 12 kilograms, so it's like 25 pounds. And I tell you, they, put, they, they put so much information on here. They got my name all over it, so I blacked out the uh, barcodes and stuff. This is the official opening, and it is sealed. be a pretty slick looking unit. So we open up the box and we reveal inside a well packed unit with another box inside and uh, get out all the packing material. To save this because as they say this unit they want back. So take a look at the box first of all. Take a look at the specifications on the box. So that's kind of a picture of what it looks like. It has 1000 watt hour capacity, 10 power outlets, solar panel compatible, 2 hour fast recharge, 2.8 inch display and app control. Probably similar to some of the other ones that I've looked at. They want a full review and they want me to take this thing apart. And since I'm not keeping it, I'll take it apart more than the ones that I, I was keeping. Accessory pack. What's in the accessory pack? Inside here is a power cord, 120 volt power cord for charging it up, as well as a 12 volt power cord for charging it in your car pretty standard equipment. The suspense is killing me. Here is the unit itself. As I say, it's it's not light. This is about, you know, 25 pounds, 12 kilograms. Uh, fairly big. And all that weight of course is going to be all the lithium batteries that are in it. But there is the unit itself. 
you've got your solar panel input for recharge you've got the 12 volt input for recharge it's got a USB A connector a USB A quick charge an 18 watt type C and a 60 watt type C two 12 volt outputs it's got a 12 volt cigarette style lighter plug output three AC outputs and a big display on the back side it has the 120 volt recharge socket to charge it at home here's our specifications so it has 1000 watt hour capacity AC input 600 watts and it will operate between 96 and 132 volts 60 Hertz the DC input 200 watts input maximum 12 to 30 volts at 10 amps maximum USB-A output is 5 volts at 2 amps 2.4 amps I should say USB-C with quick charge output can operate 5 volts 3 amps 9 volt 2 amps or 12 volts 1.5 amps Type-C output can operate 5 volts 3 amps 9 volts 3 amps 12 volts 3 amps 15 volts 3 amps and 20 volts 3 amps and then the other type C output again here's the specs for that it operates only up as high as 12 volts 1.5 amp you've got two DC outputs 12 volts at 3 amps each a car port 12 volts at 10 amps and your AC output and here's the kicker three times 1200 watts surge to 2400 watts 60 Hertz pure sine wave to turn it on should be a power switch on here somewhere uh, where's our main power switch probably this one what do we do press and hold there we go that turns the unit on it looks like the battery is at 26 percent no batteries at 5 percent does that mean I have to charge this thing before I can use it damn I was hoping I could actually use it without having to charge it but let's just turn on the uh, the AC output I'm gonna drag something out here that draws a lot of power you know what this thing is right so this draws 1350 watts let's see if it will run this with the battery at 5% so we'll plug in and we'll turn this thing on we'll turn it on high now turning this on high actually trips my other one but this is on high power and of course the battery is is dead so that might be why it shut off turn the power back on here I may have to recharge this thing first so it looks like I'm going to have to recharge it because it's telling me that the battery is dead so let's plug it in we'll charge it up and then we'll play with it to recharge I'm just going to plug in the 120 volt computer type cord and that should start the charge cycle and there it goes we're recharging and it is drawing right now 300 watts input power 303 this should ramp up a bit as it starts to charge and it's saying it's gonna take four hours to charge oh yeah output no load Ah, oh, it's got a flashlight. That's what that is. SOS. I was wondering what these were. I thought they were a display, but they're actually just light panels. Flashlight on. Flashlight SOS. This one here is AC fast charging. Oh, okay. Let's turn AC fast charging on. There. Now we'll watch what happens. There we go. Now we're drawing 708 watts, and this thing should be charged in about an hour. What is this one for? Timing. Output settings. Factory reset. Language. Troubleshooting. Timing. What does timing mean? Turn on DC. 
okay you can set it you can set it this is what you can do you can set it to turn on the power for different lengths of time two and a half hours three hours so forth so you can set it to turn on the DC power for say recharging something and then turn it off so that it won't run your battery down so say you want to charge your phone up for an hour you can set it for one hour and it will turn on the DC outlets here for an hour and then turn them off and then of course turn off DC so turn on as a delayed start and then turn off as a delayed shutdown of course I can turn it on by just pressing the button as well and it'll stay on so that's what that's for next one output settings oh here's our 110 volts 50 or 60 Hertz so if I select here 110 or 120 100 110 or 120 so we have three different voltages that we can select for the output and we can select the frequency 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz you know where that would come in handy right if you've got a uh, turntable or tape deck that has a 50 Hertz motor you could use one of these to generate sine wave 50 Hertz to run your 50 Hertz devices or vice versa if you're in a 50 Hertz country and you have 60 Hertz equipment you could use one of these to change the frequency auto out under no load it'll turn itself off it'll, it'll shut the output off if there's no load you can turn that on or off right now it's off so let's let this battery charge you can see it's already gotten to 12 percent so let's just let this thing sit and charge for a bit and then we will uh, see what we can do with it and then this thing's coming apart yeah this thing's been charging for a while drawing 721 watts I wonder if it works like the other one where it can operate as a UPS let's find out well let me turn on the power here while it's charging or not doesn't look like it's gonna let me turn on the power while it's charging turn on the DC power but I can't turn on the AC power while it's plugged in let's start taking this unit apart I don't even know how to get into it is there screws on the bottom could be or side there are torque screws on the side I'm guessing that under the bottom here under these feet there's gonna be screws and there are so let's just peel off the feet we'll remove all these Torx screws and see whether there's any screws under this screws on the bottom didn't take anything I don't know whether this just holds on this cover the screen or whether there's more screws under here but uh, got to figure out how to get into this thing does that bring okay the side cover comes off I think now that comes off and this side cover feels like it's gonna lift off well the other side cover also comes off the same just remove all the screws Now we can start to see inside the unit where the batteries and stuff are. Drawing 1150 watts. Fan's not coming on though. According to the power meter here, we should be able to run this thing for 28 minutes at this state. I got this charged to 70% now. We'll unplug the charging cord, turn on the outlet, and I have I have heat. And the fan, well, it takes a second, but I've got power. The fan actually spooled up on this thing. You heard it spool up first. So let's just see how long this thing will run for. I'm gonna run this. Let's say my battery is only 60% or 70% charged. I want to run the battery down before I open this thing up, just for safety. It's not that I intend to short anything out, but 
and you got a fully charged lithium ion battery, if something were to short circuit, it would not end well. So we'll just let this thing run here for a bit, and we'll see how long it actually will run, drawing 1150 watts. So it says it should run for 35 minutes, 34 minutes. We'll see. We'll see how long it goes for. One thing I noticed is that it, this is sounding like it's going a little slow. Let's just take a look at the output and see whether it's... I set it for 60 Hz 120. Where are we here? Output settings. Okay, this has gone back to 110 at uh, 50 Hz, so let's just, let's just bump that up. And we'll take it to 60 Hz. Now we're drawing what this is rating, 1,356 watts, and as you can see, this is rated at 1,350. I was wondering why the output was a little low. So this, of course, will run the battery down a little quicker, but uh, now we're at the rated voltage. So I don't know why it reset. Maybe it, maybe it defaults when it's turned off. Let's just do that. Let's turn it off. Let's shut the thing down completely and turn it back on and see whether it's still at 120 60 Hertz or whether it's gone back to 110 at 50 so I go into my settings output setting oh it's so it's gone back down to 110 50 Hertz that's something that uh, is good to know that when you turn it off it needs to be reset and that's actually something they should take note of at the factory, that the units that are for export to North America should default to 60 hertz when they're turned on. 110 is fine, but at least on. have the frequency at 60 hertz. There we go. Now we're getting full power. I'm actually drawing more than the 1200 watts full capacity it's running in the surge capacity now so I'm interested to see how long it'll run before it shuts it off and goes into protection showing that it'll run for 24 more minutes yes this thing's hot oh it just shut itself down hmm and now it just come back on again I didn't do that it was running and it shut off And it just shut off again by itself. And it just came back on. So I'm, I'm thinking that's probably maybe a safety feature on it. We'll just bump it down to 110 volts and uh, and see. whether it still shuts off at 110 output because now that's got my output you know down to 1138 1139 watts so this is below its rated output I'm, I'm curious as to whether it will shut down now that it's down below 1200 I guess we'll find out I will say it has been running now constantly and it has not shut down at all since switching it to 110 volts from 120. So that's just reducing it below that, that maximum of 1200. So when we were running it at 120, the heat gun was drawing 1350 watts, which was, it's, it's within its 2400 watt surge, but it's above the 1200 watt continuous, and it was shutting down and turning back on. I guess it's a way of telling me it overvoted and it wasn't happy. But reducing the voltage down to 110 also reduced the output wattage, output power. And uh, it's been running flawlessly now. We're down to 34% of the battery. So I'm going to run this right down and we're going to take this thing apart. If we look at the voltage, we're running 109.3, 109.4 4 volts. Right, there you go. So the voltage is fairly accurate, it's set for 110. 
we're drawing 109 or producing 109 if I shut this off no load you see that it goes to 110.4 so so far so good it's performing exactly as it's expected all right we're down to 20 percent now of the charge it says 10 minutes remaining at this load it's turned red because we're at 20 percent we'll see if it will actually go for 10 minutes we'll see how far this runs down before it actually shuts down okay five percent battery and there it just shut down at four percent now it's good timing so when it gets down to four percent the output turns off and it will not turn on that's it it's telling me that uh you know, it will not turn on as you can see the DC output will turn on but the AC inverter will not so if you're down to 4% you can still charge your cell phone but you can't run high power devices so now that the battery is pretty much fully depleted we're going to uh, take this thing apart take a look at the construction of it and uh, then I'll kind of put it back together and we'll give it a full charge and then maybe I'll go drag a microwave out and uh, try run a thousand watt microwave on it and we'll see what happens. So I'll start by removing these screws on the top. Okay, I got all the screws out. Let's see if I can pop the bottom off this thing. Okay, bottom plate comes off. I would imagine, oh, there's more screws on the side here. I would imagine that the top needs to come off too. However, the top pops off this thing. So it just pops off, there we go. It's got a giant heat sink in the top. Should be able to pull some screws out and get the sides off of this thing, but there's the heat sink. That's a good size heat sink there. The front panel connects right in here. Now there should be a couple more screws on the bottom that need to come out. Where do I see them? Uh, I saw two more screws at least. Four more screws. So there's two more down here, and then this thing should should separate into front and back so that we can see how this thing's put together look at the batteries and uh, so forth I gotta undo the plug here for the the charger it just plugs onto the back looks like yeah there's just two connectors two got boots on them there's no ground that connects to this even though it's a three-prong grounded outlet it is not earth to the unit itself these are the two wires for the charging module which again is not unexpected because it's a plastic case so there's really no no reason to earth it it is insulated if it was a metal cabinet then Absolutely, you would want to make sure that the uh, earth was connected, but uh, since it's not, there's not really any need to earth the input, and it's not. The, the third pin here is not earthed in any way. Okay, so now we've got the back off. We need to, uh, I want to look at the battery module. So how do we get the battery module out of that? Here's the battery module here. And yeah, they're quite warm because of course we've been running this thing for the last you know, half an hour or so, 40 minutes I guess, at pretty much full power. So the batteries are expectedly slightly warm. They're not elevated, but they certainly, this is warm for sure. To remove the front panel, of course we'll remove the six screws. And that should allow me to remove the front panel. So now the front panel should pop off. Is there 
more screws that hold that on? I don't think so. Yeah, the front panel should just pop off now. There it goes. See our output leads are, are again connected down here with boot type connectors on them. The um, power connectors here are all glued in place, so they're not going to come apart. That's very good. Very good construction. They've got glue down here. I'm going to disconnect the battery because I want to disconnect this whole thing. I want to take this thing right apart. So battery plugs in at the back here. I'm just going to unplug the battery. That way it's got no power at all to the unit. So here's the battery cable here, and it should just unplug. Just like that. Okay, now this unit is safe. Let's just take a look at what the battery voltage is from the batteries themselves. Now, remember, they are in a discharge state, but they'll still have, they should still have pretty close to their full voltage on it. A positive terminal here, negative terminal. So it's running 34 volts. So it's probably when it's chilly charged, more like around uh, 37 or 38 volts. But here's our battery 34.7 volts. In a discharge state. Now this unit is completely safe. It cannot turn on. So now I can reach into here to the other side of the inverter and unplug the other connectors so we can pull the front face off this unit and get into it a little more and take a look at it. So I'll just disconnect these plugs. I may have to break the glue on here because I do have them glued in. As far as seeing the construction because that's what I want to draw your attention to is how well this thing's put together or how well it's not put together right it uh, seems to be put together pretty good so far the construction quality of this thing seems to be pretty good you know um, looking at the soldering on here this looks to be looks to be good here and they've got uh, the wires are glued down, the inductors are all glued down here. So that's going to prevent them from, you know, from when this thing's just being banged around in general use. Because these units are designed to be, you know, taken camping. This is what this is for. You know, take it with you when you're, when you're out in the field camping. Or as a backup power supply, so if the power goes down, you can, uh, you can, you know, power things up. But it, the, the real, the real design of these is if you're off-grid. If you're living out in your cabin somewhere, or you're living in your trailer, you can put up the solar panel, charge the battery up, and then you've got 120 volts to power your necessities, like, like a toaster oven or a kettle or a microwave oven. We're going to power a microwave oven on this thing um, in a bit when I put it back together. But I want to uh, take this thing down a little more. I want to get into the inverter here and take a look at that. It's held on with a couple screws on either side. And to get that out, I'd really like to get this board out of the way here. So I may just have to work at this glue a bit so I can undo these connectors. That's the uh, AC output for the uh, 120 volt output on it. Uh, our DC output is here. So this, these, these components down here, this is going to be like the buck converter for the, D, the various DC outputs, that's what this is. Well, that was a fair bit of work to get through the circuit glue on here. But let's just take a look at the DC board on this first. And see the glue is, that's there obviously to hold the, the plugs in so that they don't uh, come loose you know, when the unit's being transported, but uh, it'll do a good job. I don't know what's gonna happen over 20 years, whether this stuff's gonna go conductive like that old circuit glue did of you know the old Sony Bond stuff from from way back it was terrible but uh, I think they probably got those problems solved on more modern stuff but let's just take a look at the uh, at the unit itself this is the DC the DC regulator board so it's got a series of MOSFETs and buck converters you'll see that the buck converters here have temperature sensors on them so if they were to overheat it's going to shut the thing down this is going to be for the 12 volt and the um, 12 volt output and the 5 volt output for the various uh, USB outputs. Uh, there's a connector down here. This was good. This one will obviously be the the input, the 
for charging for the solar power power and probably the 12 volt input as well 12 volt input goes here and it's probably stepped up through an inverter well i'm sure they're both stepped up through an inverter to give you the, the 30 or 40 volts 37 or 40 volts whatever the battery is using for a charge voltage it's obviously got to be boosted so there's going to be a boost converter circuit in here as well which is going to boost the power up to for the battery i would think my guess but that's what I'm guessing is you've got a boost converter in here for the the charge circuit and you've got buck converters in here to regulate the 12 volts and the 5 volts output for the various outputs on the side. As you know, you've got four USB type, two 12 volt and of course that one. And then your two inputs here. Let's tear into the actual inverter and battery pack. So the inverter is held in place with some screws. I'll take a couple screws out of this. And that should, I think, let me lift off the inverter. So we're just removing the screws that hold the end plates on. And of course the inverter. It's one end plate out of the way. Keep those screws separate. And then the other end plate over here. I've already removed the screws on the side for the, uh, the inverter board. And now the inverter board will lift off the battery pack. There's actually quite a bit of weight behind this inverter board too. So let's, uh, let's take a look. I guess we'll look at the batteries first. And uh, this is always the part that scares me, having lithium-ion cells that are, that are charged because, of course, they're not fused, right? No fuses on here. Look at the size of those connectors. Um, we should be able to open this up, maybe. We'll probably take this barrier off. I want to look underneath the barrier so we can look at the battery protection for the battery for the board and everything here. So this should lift up. Okay, so here is the protection circuit for the lithium battery pack I'm taking my watch off and I'm working on this thing just because this is the this is hazardous this this battery pack is even though I've discharged it the four percent it still has a fair bit of energy in it and a short circuit would not be would not be nice uh, across here you know I mean yeah I can touch this I'm not gonna get a shock from it it's only like 35 volts so it's not like it's gonna hurt me but if I were to put a dead short across that thing we would certainly see fireworks um, no question about that so we want to make sure that uh, nothing is going to be uh, um, capable of causing a short circuit on the battery you notice that the uh, circuit board has been reinforced here with these bars of metal that's to increase the current handling capability of the traces on here a um, bunch of MOSFETs they're probably either the, the charger the charge circuit over here and regulation and, and battery protection and then on this side here this is this is the, 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 the DC input these wires over here this, the, this wire here this is the DC input for charging uh, the AC input comes from the other board and it's charged through I'm sure through here I'm sure it's charged through this one there's a conformal coating on the board you can see it here so they've they've sprayed down the board to keep moisture off it you can see it on the board here which is good uh, again all the connectors are glued together so they're not going to come apart so this looks to be well done there's some silicone on these uh, uh, on the on the uh, either MOSFET or IGBT don't know what they are I'm going to put the, the shield back on there just to kind of protect this because you know um, lithium batteries make me nervous that's why you can't ship these things on a, a commercial airplane with passengers because you know, lithium batteries have been known to to go boom if you know what I mean here's the cells that are in here looks like they're uh, 18650s and there's, there's lots of them The uh, number on this is a uh, yeah 18650 an LR 18650. So we have 22 cells per level times five 
is 110 cells. So there's 110 18650 cells that makes up this battery pack. There's more, uh, I guess these are these are probably uh, voltage monitoring in different points. Right here we go, there's, there's, there's voltage monitoring test points, you can see them here. Right, it's monitoring, this is for cell balancing for all the different uh, the different cells in it. We've got cell, cell monitoring here. That's part of the charging circuit. So it's got a nice little balancing circuit on this unit as well. So that is that. Let's shove the battery aside for now and take a look at this bad boy, which is the, the power inverter. And if I remove a couple more screws, I should be able to take this cover off and we can examine the inverter. And then I'm going to put this thing back together and fingers crossed it's going to work because I got to send this thing back. I don't want to send them back broken. Oops. Those are not uh, regular screws. These ones are. What are they? These are torques of one type or another. Well, I don't have a torx that will fit it, but it just so happened that I do have a flat blade that will fit it quite nicely and remove them. That should do it for the, the shield cover. And with a lock, it'll just lift off and I won't have to cut any of these. I guess I will have to cut some of these tie straps. I'm hoping I didn't have to, but it looks like this one's going to have to be. Maybe not. There we go. There we can see what's going on here. So here's our big inverter. It's got uh, some 250 volt, 1000 microfarad primary caps on here. And um, what is this? This is a big, uh, a big transformer of some type. It's a Wizpo glued down to the board and uh, yeah it uh, looks to be I mean again it's got conformal coating around the ICs here as you can see it's like a shiny material so they've they've certainly uh, taken the time to make sure that the uh, the board itself is protected against moisture uh, this is where the battery connects to it so this is obviously the inverter here part of the inverter probably for the 120 volt uh, uh, output our 120 volt outputs are, are over here and uh, there's a relay over here which is obviously what to uh, and this is this is our 120 volt in so, yeah that's the input there 120 volt input comes in over to here uh, there are relays here to cut off the power another module which is soldered down and glued in place and some good size inductors with a good size copper on it another another whizpo inductor or transformer that could either be an inductor or a transformer one of the two but it's got some pretty good sized copper on it look at how thick this copper is it's not just wire it's like copper bars look at it I mean that's that's, that's pretty heavy look at this look at the gauge of that thing that's just incredible but everything is glued down like it should be it's got this massive heat sink on the back side and uh, I'm guessing there's probably MOSFETs on the other side that are actually attached right to this heat sink. So they're making their own modules and their own their own uh, uh, transformer board here but uh, that's uh, obviously the, the company that manufactured this Wizpo. But it looks to be, I mean, looking looking at this, it, it certainly, the, the construction quality looks to be very good, especially with all this conformal coating on here. You wouldn't expect any problems. You're not going to have any tin whiskers or anything growing on something like this because it's all sealed, which is what you would expect. So saying that, I think it's probably time to start putting this thing back together. And, uh, and hopefully it's going to actually work once I get it together. Okay, time to reconnect the front panel. Uh, this one goes down here for our, our DC, DC charge. Why did that spark? Oh, 
because that's providing DC power to power this thing up. It says it's at zero. No kidding. Maybe that goes on last. <laughs> it sparked when I plugged it in. That's got juice on it. Uh, let's plug in the... Uh, even though the main battery is not connected to the inverter, uh, I guess there is power getting to this connector here. Let's plug in the other plugs first before I start plugging everything else in. Plug that one in. And we'll plug in this control line up here and connect up the fan and stuff and then I'll put the DC line on last. That's a charge line but obviously it's got juice on it because uh, as I say it sparked and the display lit up as soon as I plugged it in. We'll connect this one up here. Plug the fan back in and then finally the uh, the AC output. The black wire is the neutral and the red wire is the live. Okay, now I'll connect the DC circuit. And this thing now lights up and says it's at 0%. Yeah, really. Turn it off. It's on. But it shouldn't be. Because, uh, oh, it's at 0% probably because the battery's not plugged in. It might help if I actually connect the uh, DC connector over here to the battery. And now it should measure the voltage of the battery. Give it a second here. Or do I have to disconnect this for a minute first? I may have to disconnect the, the DC power and reconnect it after the, uh, the battery is connected. So let's just try connecting this again now and see whether that gives me my 4% that the battery had in it when I disconnected it before. There, that's better. Now it's reading the four percent. Okay, so put the cover back on. Put that piece on to the cover. They'll be getting this thing back all dirty. We'll reconnect our neutral and line input. I put the top cover on backwards. Okay, got the unit back together, no worse for wear. Let's plug it in and make sure that it goes into charge mode. go into charge mode any second now it's plugged in there we go it's charging on 275 watts we'll uh, turn it up to full power get this thing charging up and then once it's charged we'll play around with it with a microwave oven okay I'm charged 83% I'm going to uh, put a glass of water in my old microwave. This is an old microwave. It's been sitting out in the garage for the last couple of years. When I got, I used to use this. It used to be my main microwave. When I got the uh, inverter microwave that I found, I kind of put this one aside as a spare. So I'm going to set this thing for 10 minutes on high. And we'll see whether this has enough juice to run it. Okay, 1149 watts is what power it's drawing. Let's see if it'll boil this water. This is a 1000 watt microwave. As you can see, the output power it's drawing is 1136. This is running at 110, I believe. And uh, where are we here? 
can we turn the output up? Yeah, oh, it's running at 50 hertz too. Let's uh, let's let's fix that. That's sounding a bit better. I think that was because it was running at 50 hertz. I was making all that noise. Forgot about that. Will it run all the way down? It should still heat. It just won't heat with quite as many watts because I've dropped the voltage down a bit so the, the voltage going to the magnetron is going to be a little bit lower and um, it's going to take a little longer to cook. We'll see if it'll boil this water. Probably already boiling. Oh yeah, it is. Crank it up to 120 volts. Now drawing 1400 watts. Obviously this thing's going to shut down. The microwave is now putting out full power because it's rated at 120 volts. Sucking the battery down pretty quick and it will shut down. For sure. If I stop it as you can see the water is boiling It hasn't shut down yet, but it will. Okay, the fan just kicked into high gear on this thing, and there it just shut down. We'll see how long it will run for at full power. Now it's back on. We'll just try setting it for one minute. See if it'll go for a minute. A minute is more than enough to boil your cup of coffee, that's for sure, on a unit like this with the power this thing's got. If it was a smaller microwave, like a, a 600 or a 700 watt, no problem. But this one being the power that it is. So I was able to run it for a minute, it would have probably shut down fairly quickly after that, I would imagine. But uh, it's able to run it for a minute at full power. Which is pretty amazing, considering what it is. As it's only rated to 1200 watts, 2400 uh, intermittent for surge. But it's doing the job. As you can see, the water is... Uh, certainly boiling as you can see it's bubbling away it uh, does the job ooh now it's really boiling that's superheated water one thing that disappoints me is that it cannot be used as a standby power supply one of the other ones that I reviewed before can in other words you can have it plugged into AC and it will give you AC on the other side and everything can operate through the unit as a standby UPS so that if the AC power fails the output continues and you've got the full battery capacity 
which is great for using it for computers and stuff. This one cannot. This one, when it's charging, you can get DC output, but there is no AC output when it's charging and you can't turn it on. That's the one thing that I fault this unit with, is that it cannot provide AC power while it's charging, which means it cannot be used as a UPS. It's great for if the power goes out, it's great if you're off grid, it's great if you're camping, but the one thing that I want to be able to do is to have it, have my computer plugged into this so that if I'm working on my computer and the power goes out, my computer doesn't shut down and I don't lose my data. That's the one thing I think that it should have had that it doesn't. Unfortunately, the weather is not cooperating with my shooting schedule. We don't have any sun today, it's actually raining. As you can see, it's pretty gray out here today. Now it's been sitting here now for about 10 minutes and it's gone from 52 to 53%. So it is charging, but it is charging very slowly. Let's see how long it takes to get to 54% under these poor conditions. Well, it's now gone to 54%. And that's been about, I don't know, seems like about 10, 15 minutes. It's been a while, anyway. At this rate, it will take forever to charge this thing on a cloudy day. I'm sure it'll charge a little quicker if the uh, weather is a little more cooperative. But now it's pissing with rain again. And uh, I don't anticipate any more clear days before I have to send this thing back to uh, do the evaluation. So I guess we'll have to leave it at that. It will charge, but if you don't have bright sun, it's gonna take a while. As you can see, even in these low light conditions, the solar panel is putting out 20 volts. Hope you enjoyed this teardown. Thanks for watching.